Morning, everybody. Glad to see you all uh, gathered in. Uh, there's not much point apologising to the online people because the Wi-Fi is not working again, but we're recording the service and it will be put out uh, after after this service is over. You're very welcome to Bali Lesson this morning. If you're visiting with us for the first time, you are especially welcome. Uh, we have a number of activities happening during the week. Everything's back on, but just. Uh, I want to focus on next next week. Uh, so hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully next week we have the coronation uh, weekend. So there is a tea party up in Drumbo Village that is beginning at 2 p.m. next Saturday, and it's run by uh, the local community association. But there's lots of entertainment, lots of free entertainment, lots of food, a bit of music. So please, please, please uh, pop along to that and uh, you'll have that. There's fancy dress if any of you want to be involved in it. If you want to slip me a fiver, I'm judging it. So please, well that's how it works, isn't it? So we'll have to move towards that. So that's a tea party next, next Saturday. And also then, next Sunday, there is no 9.30 service here in church because we'll be getting things ready for the 11 o'clock celebration. And at 11 a.m., uh, we will have a service of celebration followed by uh, a big lunch, the coronation big lunch, but it's a barbecue. And uh, we want to thank the local council for providing funding for us to be able to do that and to provide that for you free. So bring your friends and family with you. It's going to be a, a great day and uh, a, a day of celebration. Now also, on that uh, next Saturday, uh, on the day of coronation, the bells will ring out here in the church. Uh, they will have, um, I think it's about 45 minutes of ringing for the coronation. So if you hear the bells ringing next Saturday, that's what it's for. Uh, throughout the United Kingdom, the bells of all the churches are going to be ringing out. So that's what it is. But on the Sunday, after the service, the service will finish probably about just before midday. And then we will have a uh, opportunity i think it's a wonderful opportunity for those who wish to chime the bells is to go up into the bell tower and to chime the bell and i have to thank stephanie for this you will get a certificate who likes certificates okay so uh, you will get a certificate to say that you chimed the bell in, in holy trinity uh, church uh, to commemorate the coronation of his majesty king charles and they'll be worth a fortune in about 300 years time if you're still around <laughs> so please um do that we'll be forming an orderly queue okay because the bell tower is quite restrictive up there if you don't like steps or heights count yourself out right away it's quite claustrophobic walking up that tower but uh, you will have an opportunity to do that next sunday don't panic you won't miss your food because there'll be loads of food and the barbecue will start at about half past well, so you have a bit of time in between. Uh, Tuesday night, uh, the the women's group uh, are meeting in the small hall, the minor hall, down at the church halls in the Sergei and Fraser room, and you're meeting from half past seven. Uh, a special invite, it's been a great opportunity for both men and women. Uh, we've had our two groups on separate nights, but again, please, for the ladies, if you haven't been before, uh, speak to Leslie Ann's here this morning, or, or my wife Rosemary, who will be down serving tea. If you want to come along, please come along and, and join with them. You can drop in and out as you please, but it, it's a great night of fellowship. I think that is all of the announcements. Now, boys and girls are going to be out uh, for uh, like a joint thing uh, when we come to the boring sermon bit, but. Um, Today, it's a wee bit cryptic, okay? It's about sheep and pens and fences. And I have to be very careful what we put up and the way we do it. I was made aware of a video circulating from Fitzroy Church from a slight... If, if you don't know what it is, <laughs> you should go home and look it up, okay? It was a slight... It was the word happiness on a jar, but there was just the last bit of the word available. Okay, work that out. Some of you will get it in a minute or two, but anyway. It's a big sheep, 
and it's a fence and a pen. That's what we'll be talking about later on. Everybody happy? If you're visiting with us for the first time this morning, you're especially welcome. We have tea and coffee. I say our service lasts about two hours. <laughs> Am I right? Yes. yes, the service lasts about two hours. Usually 45 to 50 minutes here in church, and then the rest of it happens in the hall afterwards over tea and coffee and, and some biscuits. So please join with us. Um, and if you see somebody new, grab them and trail them down for coffee. If they don't want to go, don't force them. But if you want to join with us, uh, join with us afterwards. Let's just be still uh, for a moment. Lord, we just thank you for your presence already in this place. And Lord, we just pray now as we worship you, Lord, as we hear the, the word spoken, as we hear the word preached, as we praise you, Lord, that you will fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to stand and sing our first hymn. Speak, O Lord. Will you please stand? Speak, O Lord, as we come to you to receive the food of your holy word. Take your away suddenly just as he prepared to come to church and um, just this week uh, we had his funeral service and so we want to remember Shirley and the girls and, and the family at this time Trevor was a big part of this church he was probably the welcome uh, that, that that you got uh, when you sort of made it sort of just inside the doors and uh, so we want to continue to pray uh, for Shirley and, and, and the girls at this time and it's quite i think it's quite poignant that today one of the set readings for today is, is psalm 23 and, and that's one of the hymns that the family wanted at their service so uh, we'll hear a bit more about those scripture readings when it comes uh, to that part of our worship this morning but in the scripture reading uh, from uh, john's gospel that, that that we will hear later there's there's this word and it's saved it's called it's jesus talks about us 
being saved if we listen to his voice. And, and, and I think it's a word sometimes in Northern Ireland, some of us cringe a wee bit about it uh, when you get that question. Who's been asked, are you saved? Anybody ever been asked that? And some of us go, oh, well, I think so, I'm not sure. But in, the, in, in, in our word this morning, you will see the context in which Jesus talks to us about being saved. But at the start of our service together, we use a, a very familiar prayer. Sometimes we change it around a wee bit. But this prayer has the power to save. This prayer is a prayer, a simple prayer of confession when we come before God and we lay our hearts on our minds and our thoughts before him. And do you know what the beauty is? We receive his forgiveness. And so perhaps if you haven't got around it this morning, um, I, I laugh, Ryan and I have had this conversation many times, and so he says, are you saved? And Ryan goes, yes, I was saved the moment I opened my eyes this morning <laughs> at home. But this is an opportunity for you. Perhaps you've drifted away from God. It's an opportunity to recalibrate and to rethink who God is. For those of us who have a faith, it's good to be reminded of what God does for us. And if you don't have a faith, it's a wonderful prayer to hand your life over to Jesus. And so we're going to pray these words together. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Now, just before we have the big interview, James is going to come in a wee moment and we're going to ask him loads of questions. And we're going to do a good cop, bad cop. You know, you have to figure out who's who between Ryan and myself. But we are going to ask you a number of questions in which we hope to get the right answer. And if we don't, violence may be used. That's only a joke, by the way, if you come into this church this morning and think, what on earth is happening? Okay, but... Ryan, I want to thank Ryan for this this Headspace project. Ryan, do you want to say anything about it or the next up and coming dates? Well, yeah. I do, really quick. I will say something really good. Okay, so, so the Headspace project started this last week. Uh, and, and I have to say that sometimes the medium, like art or something like that, becomes a hindrance. You can think, well, I'm not artistic. I don't paint. I don't do anything like that. I don't either. It was really fun. I got paint all over my hands and on my clothes and stuff. I, I probably got more paint on myself than I got on the paper. This is just a space for you to come and, and to, to enjoy a bit of conversation and to do something different. Just do something different and free your head. Uh, and so we had a good time on, on Wednesday past. And then on Friday night, we did it with our young people at our youth club. And we had near 25 kids. And it was chaos. <laughs> but it was amazing. Uh, and, and they jumped in and they really loved doing it. So the next one uh, is not this, this week coming, but the week after, on a Wednesday night. Uh, and I don't want the fact that it's creativity or artistic to get in the way of you coming. Come and you don't have to do anything. Just come and be there. I went to Sarah yesterday. We went up to Fort Muck and I got a boatload of rocks. So you don't have to paint on, on a canvas. You can paint a picture on a rock if you want. But just come. Uh, and it's a great opportunity for, for you to clear your mind uh, and for us to gather together. Uh, so look forward to that. Not this next Wednesday, but the Wednesday after. Okay, everybody happy with that? Right, James, have you got your hair fixed? Come up, stand up here. All right, stand right in the middle. Have you got the questions as well? Yep, I got the questions as well. Who, who, who had some first, me or you? I think I'll not sure, first. James, right? Can I say something? Actually, we're going to ask, what's your name? James. James McMurray, okay. Everybody know James, do you? Can I say for a while, James was the only person at Genesis PM 
Isn't that right? You remember the nights with Jack and me just sitting there? James was the faithful one who came to Genesis PM. So, uh, James, oh, we better put up the little slide we have for you. Uh, let me see. I think it's there. There we go. Okay, Ryan. Well, so, so James, let me need to know a little bit about you. Okay, so the next question I'm going to ask is, I want to know what your favorite food is. Um, probably like pasta or something like that. Probably, probably yeah, like something. pasta or something. Okay. Well, that, that's, that's helpful, but, but maybe not as helpful as I wanted it to be. Now, I, I need to know what this group is here. Are you part of a particular organization or something? What, what, is, what is this? Yes, this is Exodus, and it's like a foundation that helps like, people out in like, foreign countries. Um, you go out and you help people who, like disadvantaged kids, to help them. Get them a new goal and stuff like that. Okay. And you're a part of Exodus, and does Exodus do stuff here as well? Yeah, so um, you meet up like every once a week with your team, and you talk to them and get to know them. And you go to like bad things and stuff. Okay. Alright. Any, any, anybody else in that picture goes to Genesis? Who else? Um, Riley. Yeah. Not Riley, that's Charlotte. Yeah, that's Charlotte. <laughs> Charlotte and, and Riley's a big bull guy, you may have seen them uh, in the rugby fields or even here at Genesis PM on a Sunday night. Matthew's there too, okay, yes, over there, brilliant. So these guys come along to Genesis. Now they go to different churches uh, during the week, but James James belongs here in Bally Lesson. Uh, now Team 30, does that mean there's 30 teams or how many? Yeah, no, there's actually more than 30 teams, so we're only like one minute. I think there's like 50 or something. There's 50 teams. If you don't know what Exodus is, it's, it's, it's a mission partnership that, that goes out to countries and takes young people out to do mission. And, and I think it's really exciting. I'm going off, off piece here with some of the questions. Okay, Brian. So you're telling me that, that Exodus is a group where young people get together and you have in some sense conversations about God, you pray for each other and for others, and you get to... You get to go on a trip somewhere. Yeah. So, so you're going somewhere. Where are you going? We're going to Romania in June, or July, sorry. Um, and there we're going to be like setting up these clubs for disadvantaged kids and bringing them food and stuff. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Brilliant. What are you looking forward to the most about going to Romania? Probably just like I don't know, it's Romania. So just going over to Romania. And, and sharing your faith as well yeah, with, yeah. with the young people, which is brilliant. Isn't that exciting, folks? I think it's brilliant that we actually have people going from here on mission to other parts of the world. Now, um, just um, so you've told us what you've been doing, mm -hmm. what can we do for you? Um, so we've been actually doing fundraisers, so we've raised actually a lot of money already. But if you want to donate, um, it's going towards the charities, in, or not the charities, the, the kids clubs that we're doing in Romania. Yeah, so I think that's wonderful. Uh, James's parents have already paid for his fare, so you're not paying for his fare or, or taking part. But if, if when we are going towards the end of this month to a coffee morning and a car wash, or towards the end of May, sorry, I should say, there will be an opportunity to donate. And all the money will be going straight to those disadvantaged kids and, and youth clubs, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Sometimes when you're given, you're given for people just to go on a glorified holiday, but this is actually a working holiday for teenagers, and, and I think it really shapes their future together. Would you like to say anything else, James? And also if you could just pray for me and the team. Well, we're going to pray. We're going to pray for James just now and the team, and then the kids are going to go out to Sunday school. Are you single? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So if you have any daughters or anything around his age there, you can, uh, you can who knows, romance might happen when you're on, when you're on, uh, when you're in Romania. Okay. C can we pray as a congregation? Can I ask us to stand as we pray for this young man? Yeah. Let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you so much for, for James and James's part uh, and, and for Exodus and uh, his willingness to go and be a part of that group and to learn more about you and to go 
and to be, be okay with being sent out uh, to a new place, to experience something new, but also just to share the love of God with others. Father, we pray for the rest of this team. We pray for those who uh, are, are going. We pray for their funds that you would provide. Uh, but Lord, we ask that you would encourage us as a community to continue to pray and to lift James and Charlotte and Riley and Matt and the rest of that team up as they go. We ask that you would give them a, an experience that they could come back with to share with us uh, and to encourage us to continue to go and make disciples. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well done. And can I tell you, James did really well, despite his siblings making faces at him from the transept. All right. So boys and girls and young people, you're going to head for the halls. You're going to have a, a joint activity together. So uh, off you go. Just follow Ryan and uh, Judith. Everybody, all ages, all to the halls. No adults, of course, but everybody else. All right. Thank you. Don't mess up. That's good. Brilliant. Amen. Our first uh, passage of scripture this morning is Psalm 23. And we're going to say this psalm together. If, if you haven't been here before, sometimes we encourage the congregation just to get involved when we're reading scripture together. And so we're going to use uh, Psalm 23. The words uh, will be on the screen. And hopefully you'll reply with the words in yellow after the level red diamond. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He shall refresh my soul and guide me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You've anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. Surely goodness and loving mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We are going to stand before our next Bible reading and sing a version of Psalm 23, uh, I will trust in you alone. Will you please stand? The Lord's my shepherd, I'm not one. He makes me lie in pastures free. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you alone. I will trust in you alone. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will lead me on. He guides my ways in righteousness, and he anoints my head with oil, and my cup in overflows with joy. I feast on his pure delights, and I will trust. In you alone, I will trust in you alone, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will lead me home, and though I walk the darkest path, I will not fear the Oh, yeah. 
Say that we're going to have our second Bible reading. enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Helen, for bringing us our gospel reading this morning. Uh, we are going to wait on you now for your tithes and offerings as we sing a, a beautiful hymn again around the theme of Jesus as the shepherd. And it's hymn 92, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds. Would you please stand? Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, uh, for your kindness to us. And so, Lord, as we 
as we open your word, Lord, may our ears be opened to hear from you. Amen. Amen. Now, um, my uh, little talk this morning is based around this word of recognition. And indeed, during the Easter season, us good old Anglicans like to stretch the Easter period out for 50 days until the day of Pentecost. But during this season and over these past number of weeks, it's about recognizing who Jesus is. And if you remember back uh, to the Sunday after Easter, we were looking at Thomas and, and the example that Thomas left for us and in recognizing who Jesus was by a physical presence and, and, and physical touching of Jesus' body. But, but today we have a, a, another account in the gospel that talks about recognizing who Jesus really, really is. And uh, I got this little graphic of a, of a sheep and, and a bit of a fence because Jesus use, uses the analogy of something that people would have been familiar with. And I think at this time of the year, for us to be talking about sheep, there's loads of sheep out in the fields. Has anybody seen loads of sheep and little lambs? Have you ever tried to go up the fence and get a picture of them? They look to be very peaceful lying there, and when you try to approach them, they run off. This week I tried to get a picture of a couple of sheep, but that was a, that was a Jeremy Clarkson quote, by the way. I'm sure Jeremy would be impressed I'm using them in my sermon, but I tried to get pictures of sheep this week, and they wouldn't, as soon as I approached them, they run off. Why do you think that was? I don't want any bad jokes, by the way. It's because they didn't recognize me. I wasn't their shepherd. I wasn't the farmer. In another instance this week, I happened to be driving. I had, had to drive across a field uh, to get to something that I was hoping to do. And the cattle, on the other hand, actually started following me. Because the farmer must have had an old Landover. And, and they maybe recognized the sound of the old rattly engine. But they followed because they recognized something that they thought was going to give them food. They were wrong. However, recognition is something that is so important. For us as human beings, we can recognize people by sight. Isn't that right? By looking at somebody, we can recognize them by sound, by their voice. And I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but smell. <laughs> Somebody's laughing rather loudly there, so... You maybe recognize somebody by the smell, but hopefully it's a good smell and not an odor. Anyway, but it, it, it's all to do with our sensory perception of, of, of who a person is. And this week, or no, last week, we were, I, we were coming out of, I was in my other office, which is Cameron's, but we were coming out of there, and I happened to look down along, across the car park, and I could see this guy looking at me, and he sort of waved at me, and I thought, I haven't a clue who he is. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah? And he was in a black suit, black shirt with a wee white collar, and I thought, it must be the local priest. I haven't met the local priest yet. I haven't a clue who he is, but he's waving at me. So I thought, this is going to be awkward. I'm going to have to go over and speak to him. I'm not saying of anything against priests speaking to priests. Technically, I am one. But as I went across the car park, he spoke to me, and then I recognized him. He was completely out of context. He shouldn't have been in my parish for a start, but I trained with David a number of years ago in Dublin. And because he was out of context, because I'd never seen him dressed as a clergyman before, and he was dressed all in black, I thought, I didn't recognize him until I heard his voice. And it's about recognizing who people are. Just this week, uh, my, my nephew uh, arrived over and he brought his girlfriend with him, and, 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 and uh, she, I caught on very quickly when we were sitting in our house and we started chatting to each other. His girlfriend's from the south of England and she started to look very blank. Why do you think that is? Because us Northern Irish people or Irish people, when we get together, when we start talking, we speed up, don't we? And although we were speaking English, she hadn't a clue what we were saying. And sometimes we can hear the voice, we maybe know some of the words, but we don't quite understand what is being said. In this passage of, of, of Scripture this morning, we have that. We, we see Jesus speaking to the Pharisees, the church leaders of the time, 
and he explains to them, he talks about the sheep pen, something which in, 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 in the Holy Lands back then, people would have kept their livestock beside their house with maybe a wall and a gate, and they would have been fenced in for safety. And he was speaking to them. He was sort of chastising them. And he was also saying, look, I am the Messiah. Others have come before me, but he says, I am the real deal. I am the one that has come to save the people. And then he talked about people coming in over the wall by another way to, 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 to disrupt and, and, and just to take away from the importance of the message. You see, Jesus wants us to hear clearly. He wants us to hear his voice. He wants us to tune our ears to who he is and what he is saying to us. You're probably going to say, Marvin, how on earth do we really listen to God? How, how can we hear the voice of Jesus? Many years ago when I I felt led to do more for God. Most of you know my, my story, my, my, my previous career in policing in Northern Ireland, but I, I felt really challenged to do more for God. And, and so I decided, okay, Lord, you've spoken. What will I do? What will I do? And so what I did was I went to three different people to speak to friends and they said, just listen. I said, but he hasn't told me exactly what I have to do yet. And he says, sometimes your listening needs to be active listening. And I'm going, right, that's a wee bit of confusion. What's, what's that? They said, you have to push open a few doors. Has anybody tried to speak to somebody in another room with the door closed? In our house all the time, you hear people shouting in the background. You go, what on earth has been said? Because the door's closed, we can't hear. We need to push open doors to hear clearly. And that's what happened with me. That's how I ended up here in ministry, is that I started to push open a few doors into serving God in, in other ways. And the door in which I opened towards ministry is the door which I ended up going through. Probably to your disadvantage, but here I am. And anyway, the important thing is we must be active when listening to God. We can't just sit in a pew or sit in a seat and say, right, Lord, tell me what you want me to do. Bring it to me. That's not the way it works. To listen to God, we need to read his word, and we need to pray, and we need to be still. If you know me, that's a difficult thing for me to do, is to be still. But that's when I find I listen to God. Just last week, um, I managed to get away just for a few hours and, and got away for a walk along a beach in County Down and it, it was just one of those, I think for me, profound moments and I think I shared a wee bit about it last week. But just, you know that we're facing difficulties with, with relatives who, who, who aren't well at the moment and, and I really took time out, walked the beach, well actually I was out for a run but it was just a fast walk I think. And as, as, as I turned on the beach, turned left, turned away, and, and ran up the beach, I, I was just asking for that stillness and quietness and just, just a bit of reassurance. And then as I turned at the top of the beach to come down, well, some of you have seen the photograph I shared, I was just looking straight across an empty beach to Slave Donard, where the mountains swept down to the sea. And, and those words from Sam, 121, which were read at Trevor's funeral this week. And I just felt God saying, look, I have created this. I have created this. He says, you, you look at the beauty of those hills. You look at the beauty of creation. And I, the Lord, have created this. So don't worry. Don't be worried. Again, during uh, the service uh, for Trevor, we used beautiful words from John 14. My peace I give to you. My peace I leave with you. Do not fear. Do not worry. And so Jesus, in this passage of, of, of Scripture this morning, basically 
said to the Pharisees and he said, look, you don't get it. You haven't actually got what I'm trying to tell you. I am the good shepherd. I am the one who has come to save. You don't get it. So he had to repeat it. And I'm sure you wouldn't want me to repeat my sermon again, would you? All right, no need to say no so quickly. But you wouldn't want me to repeat my sermon. But Jesus was emphasizing the point. He was emphasizing the point. He says, look, I am the good shepherd. I am the one who is the gate. You pass through me, my sheep come in and they go out and they go out to pasture. This is another important lesson in this passage. An act of faith. Active listening and an act of faith. I, can I tell you, I'm really encouraged to see these young people heading off on an exodus team. A number of years ago when I was in Cumber, we also had a team that went off. I don't want to frighten James, but two of those people are now in ministry that went off on, on that team many years ago. But I think it's, it's, it's amazing to see a faith that is active and causes us to act. For us, this is maybe our sheep pen, this church, the walls in which we are sitting within, they keep us safe, they keep us in and we can hear God's voice. But Jesus says you must go out. You must go out. We must go out to the community around us and, and, and share the news that Jesus saves. I don't know if you remember some of you maybe who grew up uh, in, in the 70s and 80s. We had great badges, hadn't we? We didn't have to tell people we were Christians because we had them on our, back, on, our, on, our, on our jackets. And I had a beautiful green one and it quite simply said, Jesus saves. Okay? And then all my mates used to say, but George, George Best converts, all that sort of stuff, nonsense. But we used to have these wee badges. But you know what? The simple words are the most profound and true that Jesus saves. He saves you and he saves me. He gives us a life that is eternal. I, I always say this, I, you know, after a funeral service, you know, it's the hope and, and actually the joy that we have as Christians. It's a terrible, sad time. It was a terrible, sad time for so many people in this church and indeed for Trevor's family. But it's also a time in which we know through Trevor's faith that that's not, that's not the end for him. That he is in life eternal with Jesus. I joked that he might be giving Peter a hard time at the gates because Trevor was the head porter and he knew which way to go and do all that sort of stuff. So he might be challenging him for his position even as we speak. But don't go from this place this morning without realizing who Jesus is. Seek clarity. Listen for his voice. Be an active listener and be encouraged in your faith. Ryan, Ryan shared this little verse this morning, John 10, 10. And I always harp on about it about our faith as Christians. Has anybody ever met a miserable Christian? They're dour looking, aren't they? I'm looking around here because you're all trying to smile. But do you know what? In life, sometimes we can meet people who profess to be Christians and they're miserable. See this little verse here, John 10, verse 10? What does Jesus say? Quite simply, he says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have life to the full. Not when you die, not when you leave this mortal coil, but now that you may have life and live life to the full. Some translations say to have abundant life. And that is something to cherish and to get excited about. 
that with Jesus in here, we have abundant life. Sometimes as human beings, we're like moths. We're drawn to whatever fancy light is going on at the moment. Even Christians, whatever the latest Christian, uh, Christian craze is, we're drawing to that. Is, that. is that time for me to finish, is it? Thanks, Susan. I'll, I'll finish up shortly. But anyway, we are drawn to something that attracts us. And sometimes what's attractive is not good. It's not good for us. Because the only thing that we should be attracted to is quite simply Jesus. Quite simply Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Psalm 23. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want because he gives us abundant life. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you for your word this morning. Lord, we thank you for the directness, Lord, of your message. Lord, that you have said, Lord, that you are the gate. And whoever enters through that gate will be saved. And so, Lord, we pray in this place this morning. Lord, perhaps, Lord, there's someone, Lord, whose faith has gone cold, Lord. Or perhaps they haven't encountered you yet as their Lord and Saviour. And so, Lord, we pray that in the beauty and stillness of this building, Lord, that you may enter their lives as they open their hearts to you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the place in which you have placed us as a church. Lord, we thank you for this community. And Lord, we pray for ways in which to reach out to those who are lost, those who are lonely, Lord, and those are in need. Lord, we want to give you thanks, Lord, for, for, for our young people. Lord, we want to give you thanks for James, Lord, and the others, Lord, for Riley, Charlotte, and Matt, Lord, who are all heading off, Lord, on this mission team in the summer. Lord, may they be encouraged, Lord, and fulfilled. Lord, may what they are doing encourage the rest of us, Lord, to be involved in mission at home. And so, Lord, we want to just take a moment, Lord, to pray, Lord, for those who need healing in their lives. Lord, perhaps for those, Lord, who are drawing to the end of this life. Lord, that they may be known the comfort and the peace that comes from you. And so, in a moment of silence, Lord, we want to lay before you those we know who need you at this time. Lord, in your mercy. And so, Lord, we look forward to the week ahead. Lord, whatever that may hold for each of us, Lord, we pray that we may live life, Lord, and live life to the full. Lord, we pray for the celebrations next week, Lord, for the coronation, Lord, of King Charles, Lord, and the Queen Consort. Lord, we pray for their protection and their safety. And Lord, as we celebrate, Lord, as a community, Lord, that we uh, may reach others for you. And so, Lord, we want to sum up all our prayers in those beautiful words that you have told us as we pray together, our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for our and our. And we're just going to stand now and sing our final hymn, All People That On Earth Do Dwell. If you've been challenged by anything that you've heard, please, please, please speak to us. We would love that opportunity to pray with you. And if you're visiting with us, please make your way to the hall where there's loads of tea and coffee. And then we'll try and kick you out about quarter past one or so. Is that okay?
I I mostly take a few months time. Wife standing already. All right, everybody on your feet. Let's go. Let's sing our first. Let's closing hymn together.